All right, this is the Phillips DVP 642-37 with the dreaded standby light blinking. If I press the button, nothing happens. And you can just kind of see it's uh, every uh, second and a half or so it seems to be uh, uh, blinking. And I'm going to see if I can fix it. Okay, I removed uh, uh, four screws from the back and uh, two screws from each side and the, the cover came off just fine. And this is what I got inside here. And you can see where the power plug comes in. And uh, th this is our, our power supply circuitry. And I looked around and everything looked pretty darn good. Uh, I was looking for bulging capacitors. Now, I, if you Google uh, uh, capacitors for the Phillips, uh, everybody seems to say it's capacitor 316. And 316, let me zoom in here. Is this baby right right there? My finger's kind of on it. And uh, I guess it's like one of the tall, this tallest one here. And I can see just a little bit of, of bulging on the top. I mean, it's uh, I, I don't think you're ever going to be able to see this with the camera. But I, I can see, a, I mean, just a slight, slight bulging. I mean, it really looks good. It's a, it's a, a, a thousand microfarad, and I, and I believe they said it was a 16 volt, thousand microfarad capacitor. And uh, people usually like to replace them with higher voltages. I, I really don't like doing that because they get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, when you do that. But uh, uh, we'll see here. I'll, I'll, we'll see about re uh, fixing this thing right now. So uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys uh, posted. Okay, uh, I uh, undid uh, the three screws, hold it down, you kind of see where they got little uh, blue rings where the three screws were on. Unplug this plug, unplug this plug, unplug that plug, and now this baby, let's hold it down there. Oh, there's a little plastic standoff. But anyway, uh, let me take a look at that Zoom standoff. Zoom on that plastic standoff. Basically what I did is I took a, a pair of needle nose pliers, squeezed in on it, so that's really not, so it's all in there, then I twist around there and it comes right up out of here. And now the circuit board is, is free and clear and we can uh, we can work on it and I'll see about fixing that capacitor here. Hey, just for a little fun, I thought I'd look at this thing on the bench here. I got it uh, plugged into the wall and uh, it, it's live right now. Uh, let me just kind of show you what's going on here. We got the 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 a AC line coming in here. Got the AC line coming in here. Uh, it's got a fuse, a, a capacitor to get any transients, uh, some sort of filtering for the chokes. And you can see some uh, uh, some diodes here. These are like bridge rectifiers where they rectify the the 120 volts AC coming in, and then it comes up to about a minus about a 160 volts in this big capacitor right here. And I measure there's 160 volts here. And then, uh, 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 you know, I, I'm sure maybe like this chip and maybe there's a transistor or two in here. I think you can see a couple transistors that would uh, switch this uh, voltage, uh, you know, to make it like a, uh, like a square wave. And it goes through this big transformer here. And then we have the low voltage side here. And I, I can show, show you better on the bottom here. You can kind of see how there's the high voltage section. And then they have nothing in connected except there's only that like that transformer on the top. Then here's the low voltage section. And right then these big heavy lines right here, here to here, I, I measured across C316. And this is the negative, and that's the positive, and it has five volts. So it's a it's a five volt circuit. And it seemed to have the proper voltage on there, but uh, the capacitor's gone bad. It's probably got too much ripple, something like that. And I had a, a monitor that did the exact same thing to me, you know, as far as a standby problem. And uh, it seems very likely that's what's going on here. Somewhere around here, I think I've got like a, like a 3,000 microfarad, 6.3-volt uh, uh, capacitor that I'm going to try to put in here. You know, I mean, um, it doesn't hurt to go bigger. So I'm going to see what I can do here, and I'll, I'll let you guys know. But uh, basically... Let me just zoom in here. That's about as far as it's, oh, there it goes. It's about as far as it zooms. I'm going to unsolder here and unsolder there, and then take the capacitor out and put a new one in. Okay, here we go. So let me show you how this works. You know, basically I take a soldering iron, 
and I heat up the, 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 the two contacts. And while I'm doing that, I have what, uh, a, a copper braid, and it's referred to as solder wick. And I heat it up, and the solder wick will suck up the solder, and I'll take it out. And, uh, and, and as you're looking at here, the, the top one is negative, and the bottom one is positive. I think maybe I told you the, uh, the opposite before. But uh, uh, be sure to look at the markings on the capacitor when you take them out to make sure you, because they'll have a big black line on negative. And make sure you remember which is negative and positive. And uh, like I said before, I found this capacitor. It's like, it's a huge capacitor. Instead of being 1,000 microfarads, this is 3,300 microfarads. And it's a, a 6.3 volt. This is a 5 volt circuit, so it worked fine. Although a lot of people like to go with higher voltages. People would may maybe go with a 10 volt or 16 volts. Or I was looking at some of the forums, like, oh, yeah, I get a 35 volt capacitor. And, uh, you know, you get actually less capacitance. Uh, if you have a 35 volt capacitor and only have 5 volts on there, it's not going to be as high a, a capacitance. And uh, they say it's going to last longer. But uh, I don't, don't really know whether that's true or not. I mean, these things are rated for this voltage. And uh, we'll just go for it. And it should only take a minute to put okay, in. Okay, you can kind of see the old capacitor and the new capacitor I'm going to put in there. You see how there's a big white line on there with a, a negative sign on there. That's the negative one. And you can see on the new capacitor that the, the positive is the longer lead. And uh, here's the hole. I got the hole all nicely cleaned up. I guess it's getting a little fuzzy, but you can kind of see where I, I got all the side out of the way. The hole's nice and open. Kind of see on the front. And you see how they have the, the area with the, the cross hatching that's darker? That's the negative side too. So that's the main thing to remember. Okay, I soldered the new one in there. Basically, I, I put the leads through there, gave a little bit of solder, and now I clipped off the ends. You can kind of see it in here. It actually fits really nicely. It actually looks really, really nice. Uh, no problems. It fits perfectly with the, the big giant capacitor. And you know, the reason they put a, a, a little... Okay, the old one was a, a thousand microfarads, 10 volts. And you can see there's a lot of room in here. You know, they got a lot of room. And uh, the 3,300 microfarad works just fine. And this is a... a you, know, you know, what the heck? You know, I mean, uh, the reason... You know, they want to save money. They use the cheapest capacitors they can in order to save money. And it seems to have backfired. Although they got your money and uh, you bought the, the DVD player. Now it's broken and you just have to buy another one unless you can fix it. So let's just hope this works. I'm all done. Let's get the old power cord out here. We'll plug her in. All plugged in. Let's take a look. And oh my gosh, look at that thing glow. Oh yeah, the power thing is on nice and solid. Press the power switch. Ooh, loading. Good sign. No disk. Open. And it's opened. Well, all done. Progressive scan, DivX, everything. Dolby. Um, well, th this baby's all fixed. And uh, it didn't cost me anything. Uh, well, actually, 85 cents. Uh, those capacitors are from like Mauser. Uh, oh, no, no, DigiKey. I got DigiKey for 85 cents for another project. I bought an extra. And so uh, 85 cents, and uh, there we go. It's all working.